Hi, this is Ian XO4. Today we're going to build a new type of honey farm that's highly productive, scalable with multiple beehives, fully automated, extremely easy to build, and super compact. You're looking at the entirety of a fully automated honey farm that uses eight beehives. But the most important feature of this farm is that it uses bottles extremely efficiently. There's no need to pack the system with thousands of bottles in order for the farm to be fully automated, and you don't need to evenly distribute bottles in every dispenser. No empty bottles are sent to the output chest, and the farm doesn't break if it runs out of empty bottles. In fact, if there's just one single beehive that's ready for harvesting, and you give this farm just one empty bottle, the farm will match the bottle with the beehive, collect the honey, and return the honey bottle to you. It's that efficient. The farm works by using a series of modules, each containing a hopper, dropper, and dispenser, arranged in a sequence so that they can pass items from one module to the next. An item is picked up by a hopper, put into a dropper pointing up, which then puts the item into a dispenser that shoots it out for the next module to pick up. And this is simply repeated down the line, all driven by a redstone clock. If you dispense an empty bottle to a full beehive, you'll replace the empty bottle with one filled with honey. If the beehive is not full of honey, the empty bottle simply passes through to the hopper below. Full honey bottles behave the same way, just passing through onto the next hopper, so that it can continue through the chain. Now to automate the honey farm, we're going to turn this sequence of hoppers, droppers, dispensers, and beehives into a loop so that the items that pass through the system will just go back to the beginning and will be shuttled around in circles. To get honey bottles out of the farm, we'll just need to put a basic item filter in the system to pull these items out and let the empty bottles continue around for recycling so that they can pick up honey from a beehive at a later time. The farm can also produce honeycomb by placing shears in some of the dispensers. The shears will stay inside the dispenser that you put it in, but any honeycomb that are produced will go through the system until an item filter pulls them out as well. I'll show you how to build this farm for eight beehives, but you can adjust this concept for whatever scale you like. There are many ways to apply the principles of this farm, so feel free to experiment and make a variant that works best for you. Most players will probably find it best to build the farm so that all the modules are in a single chunk, since this ensures that all of the entities and key redstone signals are loaded at the same time. Press F3 and G to bring up the grid lines and find a flat space for your build site. The clock for the farm can be in a different chunk if you like, but it's best to have the rest of the farm all in the same chunk. Set down eight droppers facing up in a rectangle, with a one block gap in between each, and add hoppers in between, with the hoppers pointing clockwise to the next dropper. On top of each dropper, place a dispenser, again facing clockwise. And in the middle, place a flower next to each hopper, assuming that there's dirt underneath, and put two solid blocks in between the flowers. Now put a temporary block over the flower, and then cover this space with a line of walls. Load the bee nests or hives over the hoppers so that the opening of the hive faces inwards towards the temporary block. And when you're ready to release the bees inside the farm, break the temporary block that covers the beehive openings. If you don't have enough beehives to cover all of your hoppers, you can put glass blocks over the hoppers temporarily until you get a chance to make more. Using glass means that nothing gets pulled into the hoppers when you break the glass later on. Now cover all of the dispensers with a spot of redstone dust and place repeaters in between, set to full delay, pointing counterclockwise, running in the direction opposite of the hoppers and dispensers. When you come full circle, skip placing the last repeater, and instead build the clock for the farm, which in this case is just a comparator fader clock that sends a pulse about every three seconds. A basic item filter can just be a single hopper placed underneath any dropper. Fill each slot with a honey bottle or honeycomb, and these items will be pulled out of the loop when the farm is running. 
As for empty bottles, place up to nine stacks of them into the dispenser over the sorter. If you need to breed more bees, use flowers on them. Don't worry, the baby bees won't be able to escape. You can accelerate their growth by using flowers on them as well. Using six flowers on one will reduce its remaining time to grow up in half. And when the baby grows up, it too will be able to breed, letting you exponentially accelerate the rate of breeding. Remove one of the blocks in between the flowers to let the bees spread to other modules next to it. You'll know that you have enough bees once you see that one or more of the bees are unable to enter a beehive at night. When this happens, replace the solid block in between the flowers to fully separate the chambers for the bees. This makes the farm more productive, since the bees won't need to push each other around as much in order to reach a flower or beehive. If you would like to upgrade the farm with an output chest for honey bottles, you can dedicate the single hopper for honeycomb, and dig a trench three blocks deep alongside the farm to add a standard item filter, pulling from a hopper. If you're going all out and would like to feed the farm several thousand empty bottles, you'll need to control the feed rate of the bottles so that they don't completely saturate the farm. Once you have an initial stock of empty bottles circulating in the farm, at least two empty bottles for every hive, add a dropper that injects a new empty bottle into the farm whenever the sorting system pulls a honey bottle out. If you're building a very large honey farm, consider chunk loading it in the nether, or use the end. Honey farms work more efficiently in the other dimensions because they don't have a day-night cycle, and there's no rain, so the bees can work all the time. It also helps with server lag, since the bees don't all pop out of the beehives at the same moment in the morning and after a rain. Also, when building the farm in the nether or end, since there's no day-night cycle, it can be difficult to tell how many bees that you have in the farm. In this case, you may want to build a bee breeder to load three bees into each hive before placing the hive into the farm, just to make it easier to keep track of the number of bees. I'll link to a bee breeder in the video description, or you can build the breeder that I'll show in the rest of this video. Before I go, I'd like to emphasize that there are really a lot of different ways that you can build a farm using the principles in this video. So feel free to explore, create, and invent. It's my favorite part of the Minecraft experience. And finally, be sure to check out the video description for additional information, tips, and corrections. Thanks for watching.